About eight years ago, I remember seeing this airplane first starting to appear in the flying magazines. It looked fast, innovative, efficient, and beautiful. And it turns out that the real one is all that and so much more. It's as if they took everything we know about modern aerodynamics and packaged it into a civilian airplane. But it seemed like it would be years till it was ready. Then, the prototype first flew in Slovenia. And after that, they gave it a bigger engine, among other upgrades in pursuit of perfection. Well, I have some breaking news. It's finally here, and it's ready for the public. It's called the Pipistrelle Panthera. The plane you're looking at right now is the first Panthera in the United States. It actually arrived in a shipping container about two weeks before I filmed this video. It still has that Italian leather, new airplane smell. But I know why you're here. You want to know its specs, so let's talk about them. It has a 260 horsepower Lycoming IO540, which can pull the plane up to 200 knots. And it's not just fast, it's incredibly efficient. You can slow down to 184 knots and burn 10 to 12 gallons per hour, which is about the same as a Cessna 172. It's also a true four-person airplane. With a useful load of 1,100 pounds, you can fill the gas tanks and all the seats. And I sat in the back seat and I had plenty of leg and headroom. And just for reference, I'm six foot one. It has a pilot, co-pilot, and passenger door, which makes it very easy to get in and out of. It's built with modern materials like carbon fiber, Kevlar, titanium, and Inconel. It's titanium trailing link landing gear keep it light and give it those buttery smooth landings. The center stick makes it a fun high performance airplane to fly and with modern Garmin avionics you have more than enough information to keep you safe. It's also $100,000 less than a similar equipped Cirrus and yes it has a parachute and it'll exit a spin. I could keep talking about the Panthera but you want to see it fly so let's go have some high speed fun. Like to taxi? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. All right, your airplane. All right. And when I taxi, I usually, usually hold the door open like this just to get a little, a little bit of air inside. And then uh, we'll switch over to the Unicon or CTAF rather. Inverness Panthera taxiing from Right Rudder Aviation to runway 19 or via Alpha Inverness. Yeah, and so one thing people comment on is the design is, is very different. It's non-standard, right? So looking out, you know, we don't have an A-pillar like you have in a Cessna. Instead, we have a center pillar, and some people are commenting, well, it's a different design choice. But actually, your visibility is, uh, I think, pretty excellent. Yeah, I like, like, the having the pillar in the middle kind of puts you in your own little uh, focus pod here. Yeah. You know, I, I like it. <laughs> it's got, I, call, I like the terminology uh, of focus pod. There yeah. you go. And of course, it's a carbon fiber airframe. Uh, they do use fiberglass in areas that need regular inspection because car fiberglass is easier to inspect than carbon fiber. Yeah. And then throughout the passenger spaces, there's a lot of use of Kevlar as well because Kevlar well known for being used uh, in the bulletproof vest in industry. Uh, it can uh, protect the occupants from shards of fiberglass or carbon fiber, so that's, yeah. that's used in a lot of places as well. Throttle, we're going to do 2,000. Oil pressure's in the green, 1,400 looking for 2,000. Okay, we hit 2,000 exactly. We're going to cycle our prop three times. We're going to check our inverse, inverse manifold pressure RPM. There we go. We're going to check uh, oil pressure dip and increase. Flaps are to 15. Excellent. Engine parameters are good. Flight controls. Let's go ahead and do thumbs up, ailerons up. Down, up, down. 
fly the box. And you can actually see your elevator moving back there. Yeah, that's nice. Any questions? No questions. Ready for takeoff? Ready. Inverness, Panthera, departing runway 19 or Inverness. Okay. Staying on center line, smoothly applying full throttle until we're getting there. RPM oh, 2700, yeah. we have minimum. Finally, a, a plane with some power. <laughs> and we have 70. We're rotating, gears up, gears coming up, gears in transition. Gears in transition, I'm bringing the flaps up. Gears up. Okay. Oh man, what a beauty. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been flying, you know, Cessnas and it's been so long since I've been in a plane with some horsepower. You really feel the, the G's on your back on takeoff. <laughs> And the engine is so smooth, too. Got this little scud layer. Get above it. it. And it feels like a like you're sitting in a sports car, like a Porsche or a, an Italian supercar. Yeah, or kind of like a, a rocket ship. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's beautiful. You want to go ahead and take the controls? All right, my controls. Your controls. Just going to do some engine parameters here. That's one thing that the the controls are extremely well balanced. You have push rod tubes for the ailerons, push rod tube for the elevator. The rudder is cable, but you feel the precision. I was going to ask that if there are push rods, uh, and I love the center stick. You know that's not very common in in a four seater like this. It's like a pilot's plane, you know, <laughs> for someone who really loves airplanes for, for the, just the love of aviation. Oh yeah. And it frees up the panel space, you know? And yeah, true. You know, Cirrus has a side stick and that's... I've flown a lot of Cirrus. It's still a little different to me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and another thing about the center stick is you can use both hands if you want, if you have to, you know? Yeah, that's definitely true and I do that all the time, actually. Yeah. Oh, the ailerons feel nice, too. Yeah, isn't it like really... It's like, precision. Yeah, I mean, it'll it'll lock into place. You yeah, know? and you've flown the Alpha, which is the same precision, you know, with just the aerodynamics and, and the handling. And this, this you could feel is a bigger airplane for sure. It's a bigger, heavier airplane. Yeah. Which you want in an IFR traveling of machine, course. of course. But yeah. it's still got that precise, very specific feel to it. Yeah, it's incredibly precise. Uh, and we'll go, we'll go up to altitude and, and show you some speed. Okay. Uh, and the fuel economy that we can get. We can probably go up to um, like 11.5, something like that, 9.5, okay. 11.5. So how does it feel to have the first one in the U.S.? <laughs> oh, it's a dream, man. Yeah. I'm, I, I I'm like, imagine. someone's going to pinch me soon, and I'm going to wake up from this dream of having this incredible airplane. I mean, it, we're blessed to be in aviation, period, you know? Right. Overall, across the world, there's very, very few aviators percentage-wise, right? And it's a dream to fly, you know, a brand new, top of the line, the world's best personal aircraft. You know, I don't think I've ever been in a plane that was brand, brand new like this one. It, you guys got it delivered like a, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and we right. just flew it uh, for the first time. I had a fly, five-hour fly-off, uh, and I just flew that for the first time last week. I flew that over two days. Yeah, and so that's one of the things, still, as we're looking through it in social media, people are saying, uh, you know, that's not really real. And I'm like, well, it's here, come see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right Rudder Aviation, we're in Inverness, Florida, and we are the exclusive de dealer for the Panthera in uh, North, South, and Central America. Okay. All right, so probably what everyone wants to know is how would this plane compare to other airplanes out there, you know, most notably the Cirrus. So this is powered by the Lycoming IO540. It is normally aspirated, injected. It's a reliable engine that is a proven workhorse, has been around for years and years. And um, in comparison with the Cirrus SR22 line with the IO550, uh, this is a much smaller displacement engine and burns significantly less fuel. And yet, the airframe is designed around efficiency. 
So we're, we're here at 11.5, yep. so you want to go ahead and level off. We're going to bring this prop back in a way is comparable to a Mooney, which is you're looking for that speed, but you're looking for efficiency yeah. in getting that speed. So it's not just a brute force kind of exercise. Right. So. Yeah, so uh, we're up here at uh, kind of a uh, economy cruise kind of a setting, which for me personally, I would use in real life getting from point A to point B as a cross country monster. Um, so we're doing uh, indicate or true airspeed as calculated by the Garmin G3X. We're doing 183 knots and we're burning 10.7, 10.8 gallons per hour to wow. do 182 knots. Um, and so that is incredibly efficient. Yeah. Um, incredibly efficient. And that's really the whole design ethos for this aircraft is how do I get somewhere fast, very cost effectively. And, and here's a, a huge aspect for the Panthera is the uh, ballistic recovery parachute. You know, of course, Cirrus popularized the concept of a whole airframe parachute system as a backup uh, for safety reasons. But, you know, what they're kind of ashamed to say is that they had to certify it with it. It cannot be optional equipment, and that's because in the spin testing, it's extremely difficult to recover a series from a spin. It is possible, but, but right. very, very difficult. Right. The now, the great news the is Victor. that Panthera can enter and exit a spin normally. There's no uh, difficulty in exiting a spin if you were to enter one inadvertently. Great useful load, 1,100 pound useful load. That's amazing. Um, and so it really is quite a practical family or business travel machine. Right now these are priced uh, for the experimental exhibition version which can be delivered uh, you know, nine to 12 months. They're priced right. at around 600 to 650,000, depending on options and the exchange rate at the time. And um, compare that to a Cirrus with similar performance specs, you're looking at 800 to 1.2 million in that right. range. Yeah, and you mentioned that they are coming out with a certified version in 2022, which is right around the corner. And so you can just see, like we're at what, 185 now, 185 knots true. Yeah, and then we're already in Williston. So we basically passed three or four different towns yeah, yeah. In, the, in this short Yeah, we're flight. just hanging out here talking, and you see how comforted it is. Yeah. It's, it's your own personal airliner. I love it. Newest airplane I've ever flown in. Yeah, you're the third person to fly, well, besides me, but the third person to fly in the United States. Man, I'm, I'm honored. And you could just see. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. You got a pretty good roll rate, right? It feels really nice. There you go, you have the controls again. All right, my yeah, control. so it's pretty, it's really well balanced. What are these uh, model instruments? Excellent question. So obviously you can see we have a very well equipped cockpit. Um, the main displays are the Garmin G3X Touch, which I have flown for years and years. Which and are years. these two large ones. These two large ones. Um, they are wonderful. I mean, you have your, uh, you know, your PFD stuff over here, your engine gauges over here. You know, you have a Garmin produced map. You have your VFR sectional chart. You can also switch it over to IFR. Okay. So this is the GTN 750 okay. uh, XI and the GTN 650 XI. And so these are NAVCOM units. Uh, and then we have the Garmin autopilot, of course. And then, of course, to finish it all off as a total backup instrument, we have the Mid-Continent instrument SAM. And this unit, its, it's primary function is to be the most reliable uh, transport category uh, type of yeah. uh, type of software testing and reliability. Oh man, this is a, actually a, a beautiful day we got here. Yeah. The, the clouds are nice for uh, perspective, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, it makes it yeah beautiful. Gives you some texture to the sky, for sure. Inverness traffic, Panthera is 10 miles to the northeast, inbound, full stop, 1-9er Inverness. Okay, so we're going to get set up for landing, so I'm going to go make sure full rich. I'm going to pull the throttle back a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to do 15 degrees of flaps. Inverness, Panthera is on a 2-mile final, 1-9er, full stop, Inverness. Make sure full rich, prop full forward, gear handles down, we have 3 green. Out, 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 boost pump is on, we are ready for landing. Say again. Is that the Panthera from Czech Republic? 
Five. Pepper Stroll Panthera, yes, from uh, Sylvania and Italy. Come check it out. Hey, very nice. I will. Nice, man. Is he the first one in the U.S.? You're like, wait, what? <laughs> All right, we're coming on in. Beautiful. Oh, that trailing, trailing link landing gear. That is yep. nice. Gorgeous, gorgeous plane. Thank you. We think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Andy and the team at Wright Rudder Aviation for showing me what the Panthera is all about. If you'd like more information on how to buy a Panthera or any Pipistrelle airplane, you can find their information in the video notes. Wright Rudder Aviation is the exclusive dealer for the Panthera in North, Central, and South America. They can also provide all of your flight training needs. If you haven't yet, like, subscribe, and visit the Florida Flying Merch Store. Until then, blue skies, and I'll see you on the next flight. Thank you.